Lever actions are as popular today as they have been in perhaps the last 100 years. There are new Marlins being made under Ruger, Henry has been cranking them out, and there are millions of Winchesters available on the used market. So the choice is really yours. But where a lot of new lever action rifle shooters get hung up is how to set them up in regards to their sights. Should you stay with the open barrel sights, add a peep sight, a go string, throw a scope or a red dot on there, there are a million different options. So I thought what I would do is go over several of my own lever action rifle sight and optic setups to let you know what I like, what I don't like, what works and what doesn't, at least for me, to help you get an idea of how to set yours up. So let's take a look at some lever action rifles. So right here I've got six of my own lever action rifles, each with a different sight setup. So what we'll do is take a look at each one and talk about why I have it set up that way. And you know what, we'll go ahead and throw in a seventh, that way Henry's represented too. And we will go ahead and start with these two guys. The one on the right is a Sears Ted Williams Model 100 chambered in 3030 Winchester, basically a Winchester 94, and the one on the left is a Winchester 94. So on this Sears Ted Williams, I wanted to leave it as just sort of a fun range gun, so I have left it with its factory open barrel sights. And as you can see, this rifle has sort of been run through the ringer, but it is very smooth, 100% reliable, and it's just a lot of fun. And the reason I wanted to do both of these together is because on my Winchester 94 here I used to have this set up just like this Ted Williams I had the factory open barrel sights on there and I hunted like that for a very long time I killed a whole lot of wild hogs with this rifle with the factory barrel sights later on I added this little receiver peep sight and this is a Williams peep sight I don't remember the exact model but it has performed incredibly well hunting wild hogs in thick brush on public land where ranges are relatively short and sometimes the shooting can be fast. I really like how this sight has worked out for me. And not only that, but if you do happen to have a longer shot on a stationary target, having an extended sight radius, that's the distance between the rear sight and the front sight, does help you make more accurate longer shots, and this rifle does perform well in that capacity. At least within reason, I think the farthest shot I've actually taken on game with this rifle, with this Williams receiver sight, was about 75 or 80 yards on a wild hog. I did make a good shot, the hog did go down, it did work out really well. But if I was shooting game, like actually hunting with a rifle like this, out beyond 100 yards or so, I think I would want some sort of an optic just to increase my chances of making a really good shot. So at the end of the day, either one of these setups would be great for closer range hunting, moving target, fast action type work, or just having fun on the range. And now we'll talk about my Glenfield Model 30A. So this is set up just straight up to be a classic vintage deer rifle in every sense of the word. And what I've got on here is a vintage Leopold M84X scope on Leopold bases and rings. Let me see if I can get the... There we go, you can see it says M84X. So Leopold made a whole bunch of these scopes back in the day and you can still find them on the used market. They're really high quality and I just wanted to put something on here that really complements sort of the era that this rifle is from. This is a 1980s rifle, early 80s, and I think a fixed four power just makes it what it was always meant to be. So another way to say it is this particular setup with this 3030 is purely for aesthetics. I wanted the rifle to be what it was always meant to be. And a setup like this with a fixed four power scope will serve you really, really well at standard woods ranges. 90% of your white tailed deer hunting, this rifle would do everything you need it to. And something else to note on this particular setup and all of my lever actions with scopes is I have this scope mounted in low rings. I always put my scopes as low as they can go. That way, when I go to shoulder and aim the rifle, I can get a good cheek weld and make a nice precise shot. All right, now we've got something truly different. Here we have a Winchester 94 angle eject. I've got a Bushnell TRS-25 red dot sight here, and this rifle is actually chambered in 7 by 30 waters. And just so everybody is aware, 730 waters is just a 3030 neck down to 7 millimeter, and what it does is it gives you quite a bit more velocity. It's a pretty neat cartridge that is somewhat rare. And now onto why I have this rifle set up this way. So when I went to the range to try to zero it using the factory open sights with this Hornady Lever Evolution ammo, which is some of the only factory 730 waters ammo you can get a hold of. Federal makes some too, but it's just as, if not more, difficult to find. 
find. When I went to go shoot this stuff, I could not get it zeroed to save my life. So what was happening is I was getting groups that were nine, even 10 inches high, and that's with the rear sight on its lowest setting. And I also tried some of the Federal ammo that you can find from time to time, and it was largely similar. It wasn't quite as bad. It was like six to seven inches high. Either way, I couldn't get the open sights zeroed to a point where I would actually want to hunt with this rifle. So my options were either put some sort of an optic on it or find a different front sight and I didn't want to jack with that. And being that this is a Winchester 94 angle eject model, they did come drilled and tapped from the factory for scope mounts. The problem with this one is that one of those front holes when I bought the rifle was actually stripped out. So I didn't want to take it to a gunsmith and have them re-drill it, re-tap it, have to use different screws. I just put a little weaver rail on the back and threw this TRS-25 on it. So despite this particular setup being born out of necessity because I couldn't get the open sight zeroed with this ammo, a red dot and lever action actually go really well together. Both a red dot sight and lever action are fast handling and excel at short range shooting. So if you haven't given a red dot on a lever action a try, it might be something to look into. All right, now we're going to look at a very unique setup. What we're looking at here started out life as a Marlin 336 XLR 3030, but I had the barrel shortened to 16 and a quarter inches. I was wanting a rifle that I could use for hog hunting in the river bottoms and swamps of East Texas, and it could just be used and abused and I wouldn't have to worry about it. So the first thing I did is have the barrel shortened to 16 and a quarter inches so it wouldn't get hung up as much in the thick stuff. And I wanted to scope it because I was going to be hunting in dark shadowy places where seeing something clearly might not be the easiest thing to do. But I also knew I wanted a scope that could handle faster close range shots. So I went with this Leopold FX2 Ultralight fixed 2.5 power on low tally rings. The fixed 2.5 power magnification is excellent for close range shooting and also gives you a huge advantage over open sights when taking longer shots. And to round out this setup, I do have a Ranger Point Precision Medium Loop Lever on here. I find the shape of the Medium Loop Lever to be much more comfortable than the standard levers that come with lever action rifles. And I also always have one of my black Latigo leather slings on the rifle when I'm hunting with it. I just took it off to make the video so it's not dangling all over everywhere. All right, now on to my big boy. This is one of the new Ruger made Marlin 1895 Trappers chambered in 4570. And really I got this rifle for when 3030 just isn't enough gun. I'm a huge fan of the 3030 Winchester, but it is a little bit anemic. Sometimes you need a bit more punch. And in a lot of ways, this rifle is almost a carbon copy setup wise of the 3030 that I just showed you. It's got laminated stocks, it's stainless steel. Of course it is a 4570 instead of a 3030, but there is one main difference. And that difference, of course, is the scope. So on that 3030, I had a fixed two and a half power Leopold. This is a VX3i variable that goes from one and a half all the way up to 5X magnification. And the reason that I went with this scope instead of another FX2 Ultralight is very simple. I already had this. I've had this scope laying around for years and I got this rifle and figured, you know what? Instead of spending more money and buying a new scope, I've already got this. I'll throw it on there and see how I like it. And overall, I have been pretty happy with it. It works well with this rifle. One thing to note that when you do crank that magnification up to 3, 4, 5x, something like that, the field of view in this scope does get pretty narrow. But the moral of the story on this rifle and setup is just use what you've got. You might be pleasantly surprised. And on to the sole Henry lever action in this video. This is their 20 inch barreled 22. I have left it bone stock with the barrel sights. I won't be scoping it or doing any other mods to this rifle. For straight up range plinking fun, I don't know that it gets better than this. Now you may have noticed that there are three very common sight setups for lever actions that I did not go over and that I do not have on any of mine. And those three are a more standard size variable scope like a three to nine or a four to 12, a scout scope setup, and a ghost ring sight. And that's just because of personal preference. I have tried all of those and I just personally don't like any of them. That doesn't mean that you might not. Go ahead and give them a shot if you think you might like them. And every one of these lever actions has one of my leather cartridge cuffs on it, handmade in USA by me just for you. If you're wondering why the channel's name is Mason Leather, this is it right here. And these are great not only for lever actions, but any hunting rifle. They're completely silent, they keep a reload close at hand, and they're customizable. Here on my Glenfield, I've got my whitetail deer design. 
On my Winchester 94, I've got my Wild Boar. And on my Henry 22, I've got this amazing squirrel design. And real quick, I just, I gotta show you my 22 pouch cuff. So I've got this on the Henry, you pop that open. It's got a little cutout here you can push up. And this holds any 50 round box of 22. Check out my website, masonleather.com. The link will be in the video description and in the pinned comment. I would love to make you your very own leather cartridge cuff. And also let me know what you thought about these different lever action rifle setups. What did you like? What did you not like? What would you do differently? Let me know.